Hey, what's up, guys? This is the first episode this year in the year 2022. Hope you are doing wonderful. I hope the, the year has started off great for you guys. I know it's almost February here, and uh, just been taking a lot of time to myself. Honestly, I have felt to myself that if I'm going to do a podcast about mental health, I have to take care of my own mental health. And so um, these last few months have been kind of crazy. It's been really probably some of the hardest months of my life. And But I'm back, and I'm looking forward to a great season of, uh, man, just giving you, I think, more of an idea of the vision that I have for this podcast. Um, first year, last year, was just kind of us launching what I'm doing here and um, kind of cultivating us just a certain perspective. Um, but I haven't really got into telling my story. And so um, I'm going to be releasing a series very, very soon. Um where I talk about my story. You know, I'm going to have some storytelling. I'm also going to have a live portion where I just kind of go into conversation live about, about, you know, about aspects of my story. So I'm very, very excited about that. I'm very excited about getting back into the vision of what this, of what this podcast is supposed to be. And so, um, uh, so there's, but I have a lot to update you guys on, a lot to talk about. Um, one thing that I've been doing recently is that uh, you know I, I do several different things for income in my life, and one thing I started doing recently uh, is trying out being an Uber driver. And recently, uh, that's been just extraordinary, extraordinary, extraordinarily awesome. I can't even talk. Uh, it's been really, really great, man. Like it's amazing the kind of things you can find out about people. And how quick you can get into good conversation. You know, I, I pride myself as being a good conversationalist. And it seems like so many people that I pick up, I mean, yeah, you, you can read them and you can tell sometimes that they're not really the talkative type, you know. And so, but it's really cool that, I mean, often, uh, you know, a person can sense that it's your, you know, re- you know, receptive to having a conversation. And man, it's it's really, really interesting just to find out how deep you can get with people with within 15 minutes or 10 minutes or whatever. I mean, I've had some really remarkable conversations with people that, you know, the, the trip's over, it's time for them to get out and we sit there and still talk, <laughs> you know? And so, you know, for me, it's, it's, it's much more, uh, there's more to it than just being a job. It's, it's, there's something about it that I, um, you know, I'm really been, been able to connect with my podcast with a lot of people and, uh, a lot of the people that, that I've run into are people that uh, I may even interview and uh, or have on the program. I want to do a lot more active things with a podcast this year. I really want to have a lot more guests. I want to have a lot more. Um, I want to. I want to go live. Actually, too, this may be the last time that I use my webcam. But this is good for Zoom calls. But man, like just a, a cell phone is just better quality. So like, I just thought I'd randomly say that. Like, I've noticed that like. It's like I tried to do this, and it's you know it's sufficient. But man, I'm I'm wanting to upgrade. Like I'm uh, I'm gonna have better audio. You know, I got my uh, my setup here, and so um, yeah, things are things are on the up and up. We're we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna go into higher and uh, better planes this year, man. But um, so yeah, man, I'm I'm really gonna have a lot of Uber stories ahead. I'm kind of. Um, you know, feeling out exactly how I want to incorporate some 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 of the things that I've learned from people, and um, but thought that was an interesting thing just just to mention to you guys. Um, you know, one thing that I really wanted to mention too is that uh, you know all of us come from different places in our lives right now. We're in different different. Uh, I don't know. We're experiencing what's happening in the world. What's happened the last several years with the pandemic and everything. And I feel like there is a common need in our lives to be able to know and to feel out the the inner life of us all that we're all kind of experiencing kind of similar emotions and similar things and yet at the same time we're unable to t- to talk about it so right now we're having what is being called a mental health crisis you know what we've experienced here with a, with the pandemic and everything um there's been so many issues regarding mental health. And for me, the word mental health is kind of academic, man. It sounds so, uh, it's hard to relate to. But everyone has 
mental health or, you know, what some condition that, um, you know, I'm sure that we all can get better in. Um, and yet it seems like we don't talk about it unless we have to, you know, unless something goes wrong. And yet I think the reason why we have a mental health crisis right now is because we are never really trained or educated in how to talk about mental health. You know, all of our schooling and education is learning about subjects that are, that are outside us. Uh, we're never really guided into inwardly into ourselves. And, um, I think too often mental health is problem oriented. You know, it's always about, you know, being diagnosed with something like what's, what's, what's a certain disorder, what's this and that, whatever. And for me, like, it's good that we're identifying that we have a mental health crisis and that there's, there's problems and stuff. But to me, we should be more conscious of what is the solution to our problems. And I have a lot of ideas about this, but just to put it um, in a very simplistic way, human joy is something that we all are designed to have. We're designed to have healthy attachments. We're designed to have um, a healthy alignment within us. Like we feel it. Like when when we um, when we feel when like if if you do meditation and allow your mind to, to just rest for a second and to kind of withdraw from the rat race, you know, you can feel yourself, um, well, you can feel several different different things, you know, man. I know for me, like, when I went to go record this episode, um, I probably I was like, well, you know what, I feel like I, I need to meditate for like five or ten minutes. And so I, I just started. And that turned into about an hour and a half of me just sitting here, allowing all these different places of tension kind of just dissolve, you know, me letting go, me kind of consciously say, oh, I didn't know that was there, you know, and it, things come up. And, you know, that's the thing about med- about meditation, when I think you really try to calm your mind and, and allow yourself to let go, there's a sort of trusting in yourself, like there's so many different places in us of tension that um, we feel justified in having that tension. We feel justified in being angry for certain things, holding on to certain emotions, and they don't serve us. And especially now, it's such a polarizing world. There's so so much negativity that really doesn't serve us at all. It just it helps us, um, or it hurts us in understanding each other. You know, it helps misunderstanding each other. I guess you could say. But in my own experience, right before I did the, I did the, I hit record here. I was, um, I found myself in a state that I wanted to do this for the wrong reasons. It was another one of my, you know, check marks on my to-do list. Like here, I'm going to do this. And I realized that it, this, things like this, my, my music and also the podcast and, and the things I'm, I'm, I'm engaged in, they require my presence of being. There aren't just things that I, you know, hurry and go to. There are things that I, that really require my spiritual and psychological wholeness. And so when I found myself wanting to prematurely, you know, do whatever, you know, do this, I feel like we all probably have that in our lives. We have all these things that we're trying to do. It feels like the responsibility to our inward life is something that we so easily neglect. And yet it's, it's, it defines it, the way that we see everything. We're able to define the world in a very personal way to, the, to everything that we do carries more weight of intention. Uh, I think too often we're, we're chasing after self-conscious um, ideas. You know, we're trying to do things because we want to you know, look like our lives are in order. You know, we want success because we, we want the, all the uh, attraction, all the uh, allure of success rather than actually being a success as a person. You know, I feel like we, we, when we're little, you know, we're asked, you know, what, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, and we have this attachment to being as doing, you know, we were like, Oh, I want to be a firefighter. I want to be president. I want to whatever. And yet, you know, we're, we're called human beings. We're not human doings who you should want to be 
as an adult or when, when, when you grow up or whatever you want to call it, it is, um, it's who you are and you can do so many different things and yet keep the, the central person of who you are. And to me, that's what this year I want to really begin to explore in this podcast is that who you are is someone who came into the world unconditionally. It was given to you as a free gift. You never asked for it. You never asked for your existence. It was just given to you. And we, it takes us years of learning um, our biases and all, all these different things to where, to where we finally get weighted down with existence and we kind of doubt even the goodness of, of existence, man. Like I know I've been there, you know, and yet for the longest time, those thoughts don't even enter our mind because we come into this world as, as a pure animation of life. And I think it's the job of a educated person to be able to, to, to understand um, or enlightened person, we want to call it to understand that, we need to both maintain, I want to say this, it's our job as adults to recognize that being an adult isn't just going through the motions of responsibility that we think is the things we should fulfill as a member of the human race so that we're just another person doing something. You know, we want to be someone who is really making an impact to people around us. You know, we are all in some way, I think a leader, especially now, if we're going to combat the mental health crisis, we all should be leaders now in this because the people around us need our wholeness. You know, unless we become whole in ourselves and take that leadership upon ourselves to really explore our joy and the person that we were created to be, the person that really ex expands its oneself into the world, uh, you know, in a way that is vulnerable but also powerful. Um, one who's not afraid of weakness because we identify with a deeper strength in ourselves. You know, when we feel weakness, we don't, we don't identify with it. We say we, I, we identify it, but we real we realize that it's not an indication of who I am, you know, so I'm not, I'm not intimidated by weakness. You know, that allows us to be so much more that we're not trying to imitate strength or imitate something that's more acceptable to other people, but we are, we are pursuing a, a fullness of our own life. Our only real reference for this is childhood, how we come into the world and we are, we're already kind of aligned in lots of ways where we just experience things so, so positively. And I really believe like we should have the ability to, 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 to um, you know, have the, the the rationality of of an adult, you know the be the ability to to have awareness, you know mature awareness, but also have all that potent energy as a child, so that we can both hold you know the childhood childlike energy of how we came into this world, but also hold all, all of our potential that we can be in this world as as an adult, you know, and, and combine the two. Much has been said about our inner child and whatnot and everything. And, you know, I'm still kind of researching that whole idea because I, I have some issues with it. You know, I feel like we have both the inner child and the inner adult <laughs> and we have to integrate the two. We have to really pursue what both of those things mean to each other, to where they become um, parts of each other. You know, they're not just parts of our, of ourself that are, uh, you know, we co compartmentalize ourselves. Um, there's a fullness of who we are that we don't repress one side to be this this part of us here. Everything comes together and we're a full person. Uh, that's why for me, man, like talking about this stuff is so interesting because I tie it to all the fun aspects of life. You know, to me, it's like, you know, I'm sure a lot of, a lot of you guys have been out somewhere with friends and like something happens where like somebody is having an issue with something and it kind of, spoils the, the fun for everybody else man you know probably at some point i've even been that way you know and and you know when you're a little more emotionally unstable <laughs> or whatever um and it's almost like to me you want to 
when you have fun, you want to be to be free to where things don't bubble up and you're not having to deal with things there. And then it's kind of embarrassing and everything. To me, in order to have fun, a depth, a deep kind of joy is, needs to be there to really enjoy your 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 friends, to really be present, to really allow yourself to open up and just be just be a spontaneous animating life that, that's able to, to do anything and, a, and able to enjoy everyone that requires kind of a running start you know of of dealing with stuff down here to where even your your silliness and, and your fun holds kind of or, or is being held in the foundation of of a deeper strength a deeper um you know i say this all the time but happiness is a serious thing it's like a kind of an oxymoron, kind of a paradox. But it really is. It's true. Um, and so for me, man, like the whole purpose of me starting this podcast is that I wanted to begin to relay a lot of ideas that I have had in my own life because, you know, I've been kind of dealing with things for a long, long time. And um, I don't like the dynamic of saying that in assuming some leadership role because I believe you don't, bond with people very well like I, I don't want to be like your guru you know like to me if you're listening to me man you're you know you're you're an equal you're a you're a friend you know um you know i think we all have areas that we have insights into and i think my area has been very very um unique because the drive that i have to resolve things a certain way has really taught me, um, well, has led me to go after a lot of deep questions, a lot, a lot of deep things where I have, I had to cultivate a, a depth that became my, uh, you know, I say this too, that, you know, you know, I having to really confront obsessive compulsive disorder, I had to become obsessive and compulsive about, you know, about self-improvement. I had to kind of channel it into a good way. And so there's a way that we, when we experience negative things, that we can take that sort of um, force and work with it. It's almost like judo, where you use someone else's force against them. You know, so with that said, man, I, I want us to approach mental health from, 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 from a standpoint that we're not trying to solve problems. That's kind of like a, a, the secondary thing. We're actually trying to pursue joy and the depths of joy and the mystery of joy, the meaning of life. What makes us come alive? Like, what is the, you know, if you've ever had like weird dreams that after you had the dream, you're like, I don't know how I can possibly communicate what I just, what I just experienced. But for some reason it makes sense. Like it resonates with you. And yet like, you know, like it was so abstract that it doesn't make like logic, like conscious sense. You know, there's this weird element to our consciousness that the deep things that we that we uh, that we know and, and and really hold on to are things that transcend just consciousness. There's a, there's a real mystery to the human soul that things go deep. And man, when we, when we have these you know wonderful dreams and have. Uh, Sometimes these meditative states where our unconscious is able to be released into our in, into our consciousness. I mean, at times, the, I, you know, I, I, I'm not going to really share this now, but um, experimenting with 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 you know with spirituality, with meditation, with prayer, um, I've had natural psychedelic experiences, and you know, I wasn't on anything whatsoever. It was just. It was just my soul being able to be unlocked in some way. And I was experiencing, uh, I guess you could say I was experiencing myself, but I, you know, I, I believe in God. And so I believe that we're, we're created in his image. And I think there's a great mystery there, you know, uh, and how we, sometimes when we, when we experience God in some ways we are experiencing ourselves, you know, so it's, there's a great mystery there. Um, I have very, very uh, open-minded spiritual beliefs, but, um, you know, I do have kind of a, you know, I do have a Christian foundation, but to me, I, I disagree with a lot, with a lot of the closed systems of thought within Western Christianity. And, um, 
you know, I do want to discuss those things because I feel like a lot of the areas we have um, that are problematic in our society stem from a superficial Christianity. And so for me, I've, I've had to kind of um, pursue some answers and some understanding of, of these things. And um, I'm really excited to, to, to talk about those things because I really find them interesting and fascinating. And I feel like um, most people's understanding and uh, of Christianity is something that's, that's unfortunately very repressing in nature. Um, you know, I mention this a lot to people, but uh, one of my favorite verses is the strength of sin is the law, something that the Apostle Paul says, I think, in 1 Corinthians. You know, the more that you place restrictions on somebody, it actually strengthens their resistance, you know, to, to you. You know, it's one of those fallacies that, like, you know, we think that if we just preach morality or preach, um, and this can go, go not just with Christianity, but with anything. I mean, if we, we, if we just think that if we can, if we know the right thing, we'll do the right thing. And that's just not the case. That's not human nature. Like, there's lots of things that when we know the right thing to do, we don't do it. But to get us back into, into joy, to me, the mystery of spirituality brings us to the domain of joy, the domain of understanding ourselves, our inward, our inward reality, uh, and then ex- and, and exploring it. Like there's there's a return to a state of uh, childlike acceptance of being that I think is part of the whole being born again principle. You know that I feel like it's a um, it's very much uh, in line with a lot of the therapy and a lot of the things we've learned in psychology. And um, to me, there's great mystery to it. So really our business here is exploring the depths of human joy. I really want us to go in, into areas that we're, that we're not, that we, we may not even think have, um, we may have doubts, honestly. We may actually have um you know, some really interesting theories even that aren't totally formulated. We, we may just kind of walk out and, and experiment with, with thinking things differently. And, uh, you know, I feel like that we have to really break ourselves out of what is considered um, normal in our society right now. Like, you know, not, not just do, not, not be abnormal for the sake of abnormality, being contrarian, but actually challenge ourselves to kind of think differently uh, and not leave reason entirely, obviously, but like come to view mental health from, from a direction that I think is fresh and new and it injects excitement because I believe that we're not going to cure this or solve this crisis unless there's genuine fascination about the human soul. You know, what's the depth of what we can experience? Because I feel like when we can really understand the depth of who we are, and then there, and there's an expansive nature to understanding that, that, that you know, that when you spend time uh, doing inner work and healing in areas and stuff, that's just the beginning. That just gets you to a place where, um, you know, to me, he, like healing and trauma recovery and all those different things, that just kind of gets you to kindly, to, to finally be able to return to some of the deeper states that we, you know, have memories of since child, you know, like, like from childhood. Like for me, man, when I began to really recover, it's like my memory of my life just became, became intense. Like I remember things from when I was like two. In fact, there's even things I remember being, I mean, I had a dream one time that like, I mean, literally, I, I was like half asleep and half awake, and I I can remember like feeling like a small infant, having all these memories of you know experiences with my family and stuff, and it was like it was as if I was there. It was like like I was remembering things that were that usually people can't even remember, you know, man, like it it just makes me wonder that when we are able to get rid of the ego because our brain and our mind is so attached to, to the ego that it's a hard, we have a hard time remembering, um, you know, unegoic states, you know, before we constructed our ego. So our memory, it takes a while for us to even remember like how we felt, um, you know, at a very, very young age. 
And then we, when we can kind of begin to remember that feeling, we can then have that, um, you know, we, we can kind of integrate that, that, that those sensations, those, those memories, those feelings, you know, in, into our body and in, into our life, essentially, to where uh, we begin to explore the full, the fullness of who we really are, because we realize, oh, okay, I thought I was maybe I was whole and full, but there's an expansive nature of this. You know, I have a hard time accepting our idea of inner wounds, okay? Because the soul isn't like the body. You know, the body we can we can see. You know, we can like when I when I have a wound, I can see it. When I'm healed. I can you know I, can, I see that, that, that that's well. Inner wounds are are different in nature because they um they heal differently. They're just not superficial things where you look at inside and say, okay, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay. They are healed by linking things to it. And so someone's wound is, is, is a break. It's a break in, in the chain of one's, you know, animating energy to where all of a sudden one's energy either gets stifled, repressed, or it gets cut off. And healing is when we can experience the flow of our, of our energy in, in that place. So for me, when we, when we heal, that's just the beginning of us experiencing this area. We can expand in that area. We can expand in our experience of ourselves in that area as well in, as in other areas because there's more flow, so to speak, you know? So, so that's, that's kind of what I'm talking about, man. I want to challenge some of these pop psychology things that don't really have real like experience. Like we, there, we can understand understand the concept of it, but it's um, real uh, utility to how we understand ourselves. Sometimes it's too abstract or too academic. These things have to become experiential, and we have to learn how to, um, I don't know, I guess experience ourselves and and experience what it really means to be whole. Uh, so I'm going to give you a lot of my takes on that. And I think it's very, very interesting stuff. You know, I think it's very, very, very fascinating. You know, I have a lot of little tidbits that I think, um, a lot of people will be able to gain something from, man. You know, I'm not an academic expert or anything. I've just, I just have my own life to, you know, to pull from. And so essentially what I have is just stuff that's, that's worked for me. You know, I've had counseling and therapist, you know, therapy and stuff. And so, um, you know, I encourage everyone to, to, to take steps to see people and, and accumulate their own knowledge. And I hope that I can just, you know, kind of supplement, uh, what I believe is a person's real necessary depth that's required to really live from the heart that's been given to you unconditionally, you know, um, you know, I think all therapy and everything is to kind of get us in tune to it, but yet we don't really even address it that much. We talk about, you know, uh, revisiting childhood, revisiting th like things and meanings and stuff. And like I said, it's more problem oriented than, you know, finding what's home base, finding what is joy to us. What is the thing that makes us, uh, what is the, the sensation that I feel when I am myself? And, then, and identify with that wherever I go, allow myself to flow with that, detach myself from self-consciousness, detach myself from all these, these tension, uh, these tensions that tends to, uh, tend to uh, restrict and tend to feed narratives that um, leave us into fight or flight, you know, leave us into, to be victim of our own instincts to where we're trapped in our instincts. We're trapped below. We can't, you know, can't get out to me. A lot of these things that I want to talk about that, um, you know, that involve types of meditation, types of, of um, you know, types of self development, is being able to, um, what I believe, what I like to call, you know, active meditation, to where in real time you're meditating with people, you're able to drop below um, where you are to hold the conversation or interaction you're having to where you're just not meeting people where they are. You're coming from a deeper place. Yes, you're meeting, I mean, you are meeting them where they are because it's the only way you can do it. But you're, you're coming from, from, a different, from a different place, from a place where you can hold um, 
the weight of the infrastructure of having of of having a life where no matter who you run into and what happens, you're stable, you're secure, you're able to build your life um, because you're just not out to solve problems. You're, you're just not, you know, to me, problem solving is just, you know, uh, is just kind of just seeking a found a foundation. But to me, like joy is like, okay, what's the purpose of having a foundation? What, wh- you know, what is the, the infrastructure of the, of the fullest expression of myself. Like, what does that look like? How, how do I develop that? And um, I hope to lead kind of you guys into my story to really grasp a lot of really, really good, cool nuggets of, of, of truth and perception. Because uh, I, I, really, I really feel like what I've shared with a lot of people, um, people really t- tend to really enjoy what I, what I have to say. And so... Um, I feel like there's great utility that um, that I have to offer, man. So um, I took some notes of some, some things that I w- w- wanted to mention. You know, one thing that I really want to do, you know, when you when you when you when you find yourself getting more in tune with the truth of your life, truth is a, is physiological. There's a rest. There's a peace that comes that that's you know because you're dissolving that tension, that unnecessary tension with, within yourself. And you're able to really engage with people in a way that, it's, you know, it, you, you can connect because you're connected within yourself. You know, we realize that so much of what we experience is um, what defines our experience with everything is our experience with, with, with ourselves. And so we're not really led in, in, to, into, you know, into self-knowledge in any significant way in our society. And I think it's left to, um, you know, writers, podcasters, and, uh, you know, and people to, um, you know, that, that can kind of see the importance of having this kind of root in yourself that it's really the only way to have, have a substantive connection with the world. Some, some people do it more organically. I think we all, in some ways, we kind of stumble and bumble into it, you know, um, but to actually have, have deeper conversations about it, that's what I think is missing with our whole attempt to cultivate a uh, mentally healthy society, is that we, we don't really have comfort in navigating some of these areas until there's problems, and that's not right. You know, this is kind of going a little long, so I'm going to cut this. But um, I definitely just wanted to give you guys a little, a little insight into what's ahead. I'm going to be, um, I want to take the podcast on the road. I want to really do a lot of different things. And so this is just kind of a primer of just what, what's what's co- coming ahead. Um, so I'm going to have at least weekly content. That's going to be my goal. If If, pu- if push comes to shove... I'm just going to turn on my my phone or camera and just start talking about things, and uh, we'll see what happens, man. <laughs> I think if I have to put everything into a certain context or a certain um, you know period, is that our, the business of this podcast and is what I believe is really the business of all mental health, and that's returning us to to joy. And joy bring leads us to a trust in ourselves to where. We can let go. We can, we can kind of explore who we are. The more we know about ourselves and the nature of our of what is a truthful representation of ourselves, where we're not caught up in our instincts, we're learning how to transcend our instincts. We're learning how to define ourselves in a deeper way. We learn that because we are not held by these instincts, we can let go of them, and we find parts of us resolve. Parts of us come to. Uh, terms with our life and who we are that we didn't think was possible. I could speak for myself that there's lots of areas that I thought were like of unrepair or disrepair. And I wish I would have had someone to guide me and and kind of speak optimistically about my life and say, man, listen, there's areas right now that I'm sure you feel, you know, shame about things that that you didn't even conceive that were possible to happen to you 
and you, and you're left having to navigate it and no one can quite really understand what you're dealing with if i could talk to, to someone like that right now you know we have to understand that man that um you know shame and and guilt are things that exist in my opinion from in second person like we see ourselves and we put a, a judgment on it you know we're we're, we're essentially detaching ourselves from ourselves to place judgment on ourselves and that's fine and dandy that's that might be apropos okay but that's not self-knowledge all that is is to say that there's something deeper than what this is you know if if there's states that we feel weak in there's states that we feel are not reflective of who we are and we feel guilty and we feel incomplete or whatever you know those things those areas are areas that when we feel the second person judgment of guilt within that if we can make that conscious for, for a moment the fact that it's in second person shows that it's a judgment that's very superficial it's, it's looking on the outward and too often what we're guilty about is being a lesser version of ourselves. Like we know we're not being ourselves. We know we're, we know we're not um, being a full expression of, of who we really are. We're caught in, in either instinctive being, which is kind of an oxymoron. It's, it's uh, we're caught in the instincts and where we're, where we're reacting. And what we're in need of is, is really more deeply understanding ourselves and guilt and shame and all of that, that can be used to simply indicate to us, I, ha I have to go deeper. But then after we begin to go deeper, you have to let go of guilt and shame because that serves you, n n does not serve you at all. The way, way that we kind of view ourselves has to change. And all the, the, the guilt and stuff are things that it serves its purpose to get you going deeper. But after you go deeper and you begin to know who you are, you have to allow the judgment to be passed onto affirmation, you know, into the depths of who you are, truly are, not just who you are on the outside, but when you get into to know yourself on the inside and you begin to really cultivate self-knowledge, there's a resolution there. And you can allow all the negative feelings about yourself to go away because you finally know what it's like to really love yourself because you know yourself. And so really the job of this podcast is just to, just to help us explore the self-knowledge and, and the joy that we should have about our own lives. And uh, I'm looking forward to a great year of exploration. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again real soon.